Hello, StarCraft fans. This is Moltrap, and I'm here once again with Cholera and Rise, and I'm, I'm making an effort not to forget uh, my co-commentators to introduce them a couple times. I apologize to, um, probably to you guys, actually, for uh, in the past, you know, I get so excited about introducing the game, I forget to say who, sometimes I even forget to say who I am. Uh, and uh, most of you guys know me already, you know us pretty well, but sometimes new people watch and they're like, who the hell are you? They're like, is that Viltac? Is that Clazard's brother? What? What's going on? Is that Clazard's wife? Uh, no. <laughs> I am Moltrap. And for GG is Terran, and uh, Stork is Protoss. This is, I believe, on Athena. And, um, yeah, it should be an exciting game. Stork took game one uh, pretty um, solidly against 4GG. For GG, now this is a best of three, so for GG has to win this game and the next game if he wants to take the series. All Stork needs to do is take uh, one of those two games, and he will proceed to the round of eight, the quarterfinals. Yeah, and if Stork's play is anything like it's been in the past, I don't know, 20 games or so, uh, I think he's got a really great chance of taking this, uh, this match. I mean, really, he's been just, especially if he goes Reavers, which he seems to always do, it's just one of the most uh, ridiculous micros I think I've seen in my life of watching StarCraft. I, I can't believe how insane this kid is with uh, Reva Micro. So I'm, I'm hoping to see some more of this in the uh, coming games, and uh, and hopefully we do. But uh, for GG, also a very a very solid player. Uh, I actually think he's a little overrated. I'll probably get some uh, disagreement there, which is cool. But I, uh, I think that... Uh, he kind of is, is uh, a little overrated because he, he's played well in the past, and I just don't think he's as consistent of a player uh, as Stork has been, especially in the last, you know, uh, 25 games or so. I mean, it's just insane how consistent Stork has played. He's got to be practicing constantly, but I, I think that uh, overall Stork is just a little bit higher in his, uh, his play level these days in 4GG. Wow, and Stork has taken a big risk here. Uh, by the way, this is Cholera and not Diggity. Sometimes, <laughs> maybe one out of every five commentaries, someone says, who's that guy commentating? Is that Diggity? And then people give him, like, negative five thumbs down. So, yeah, no, I am Cholera and not Diggity, although I guess the smoothness of our voices supposedly makes us sound similar. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Stork taking a kind of a big risk here, uh, going for the 14 Nexus, trying to get an early advantage here. Um, 4GG is the reigning MSL champion, for those of you who weren't following the last uh, last couple of well, the last season, I guess. Um, looks like he's going to actually go for a two factory build here, I believe. Uh, no, no, I think that was just his first factory. Um, sorry, he's probably is going to go for the two fact though because he's still mining gas. Because uh, normally, if you're going to go for that fast expand, you would stop mining gas at this point, um, or you only have one SCV on gas. Uh, anyway, he's going to now scout. Uh, Stork here. Stork obviously has nothing to block his ramp, and uh, the SCB will get in. He's going to see what's going on, and maybe he's going to switch into a two-factory build here to try and get an early push on. Otherwise, he is going to take a little bit of a economic disadvantage if he doesn't push early because of the uh, very early expansion from Stork. Uh, but doesn't look like he's uh, putting down a factory just yet. He could, though. Um, by the way, I, my opinion on 4GG is that he's very much of a, a studied player. He plays very well when he has time to practice and come up with a counter build against his opponents like he did uh, against Flash and then Jadong last season in the MSL. But I just don't feel like he's so strong when he uh, you know, just has to play lots of opponents in a row. He just hasn't done that well. Um, and it looks like he's bringing a couple of Marines out to uh, try to do an early push, I guess. I am actually really fearful for Stork at the moment. He, um, you know, for Gigi coming in here with a little bit of an early push, the Zealot's going to be able to take care of that Marine real quick. Uh, but for Gigi pushing in real quick, for Gigi's nickname in Korea is Time Attacker because he's so good at getting timing <laughs> attacks and attacking at just the right moment when your opponent is, is vulnerable. And Stork is vulnerable right this moment. And it looks like for Gigi is thinking about getting an attack going on here. And yeah, Stork knows it. Running his probes out of his expansion, uh, knowing that an attack is coming... For Gigi, never took SCVs off gas, so he had plenty of gas to start building more units with it. Stork going in here. The bunker's being built. Stork's going to try and take out those Marines before they can get in the bunker, but it's just not working. There's Oh, there's just too much firepower going on here. Stork is not holding this off very well at all. He's going to have to abandon his expansion, I think. Um, I don't think he has enough forces to um, hold this off at the moment. He's going to have to fall back to his ramp, take that uh, disadvantage going in the middle of the game. And the other thing I was thinking, actually, is that Stork was probably spending most of his time practicing for the OSL semifinal, which we're not going to spoil in this, but uh, he's probably placing the OSL semifinal, um, giving it more priority than this. 
And so he might not have even been practicing this map or this matchup at all. And maybe that's why we see him going for a 14 Nexus, just trying to, you know, figuring if he can hold off the 14 Nexus for the first, you know, seven minutes of the game, then he'll be, he'll have an easy win and he won't have to have a practice strategy. Um, I don't know, that might have counted into it as well. It looks like Stork, he's uh, setting up to do some kind of a surrounding here. He's got some Dragoons outside of the bunker. Probably going to come in and try and take out that bunker right before it kills off his Nexus, is what I would, what I would imagine. Uh, I think he's actually waiting for uh, range, and I think he might have yeah. just gotten range, so he can outrange that it. bunker. And, uh, uh... and now he's going to be able to take that bunker without losing that Nexus or or uh, or too many Dragoons in the process, with the exception of apparently a probe. But that hurt Stork a lot. I mean, he's way behind now. He, he definitely he lost a lot of probes in trying to take out that bunker before it went up, which he did unsuccessfully, obviously. And uh, he also, he, he's just been off mining from that, uh, that Nexus for a while, and that's just wasted minerals. In the meantime, 4GG obviously is the time, atta uh, time attack king because he, that was that really was perfect timing, and he's taking that and putting it to his advantage in making his own fast expansion. Well, his own expansion, certainly not a fast expansion at this point. It looks like a robotics facility has gone down for Stork at this time, and also Stork is going for another expansion. So. Um, potentially overextending himself a little bit here, considering how many probes he just lost. I'm not entirely sure that's a good idea, and I think that uh, that may come back to bite him now because uh, 4GG is just going to get that second that that expansion running and, and start pumping troops out of uh, what looks to be two or maybe maybe he's already set up his third and fourth factory. I kind of missed it. Observatory going down first for Stork, so it looks like he's going to try to play it a little safer and see what's coming his way. But I don't think he's in a good position right now. Yeah, by the way, for those of you who've uh, been watching um, these games in order as we upload them, I believe Firebat Hero vs. Tempest uh, will be play will be uh, right before this, so do take a look and compare these two situations. It's actually, uh, this is not going to spoil anything, it's the same location, same map, and the uh, same sort of basic strategy opening up for both players here, um, going for that early second uh, expansion uh, that, that uh, Stork is right now. That's what Tempest did in that game. Anyway, I won't give away too much of it. Just really interesting comparison between the two players. And it looks like we are going to see, similarly, 4GG is going to go for that early armory and get his upgrades going quickly. So it seems like this map uh, definitely has um, some, some very conventional builds going for it, uh, and it seems that both players are going to go for that. Um, and it, you know, I think this is a Terran favor map, so the Protoss wants to get an early economic advantage. Um, you know, Stork tried it with a 14 Nexus. It sort of succeeded, and then uh, he lost a lot of probes. And now he's going to try again with uh, this double expand, um, because he knows he needs to take that economic advantage. Otherwise, the fact that this map has all those plateaus around, what it does is it makes it very hard to surround the Terran army, the Terran uh, tank, uh, you know, vulture, mine, lake and ball. Um, it's just very hard to surround, and a, a Protoss player needs to surround that to uh, to take out the Terran. So uh, you know it's going to be it's going to be very difficult for Stork, I think, in the long term, if uh, 4GG continues playing as well he has as he has so far in this game. Yeah, this is uh, this is coming out pretty interesting. Stork here has his two expansions up now. I, I think I'm going to give a slight advantage to Stork economically. Um, because he didn't actually lose that Nexus, and that was critical. If he had, he would have been at a severe disadvantage, but he didn't actually lose the Nexus. He was able to go right back to mining as soon as he took out that that uh, bunker. Now, yeah, I'm, I'm finding it really hard not to talk about Fire Hero versus Tempest, actually, because it is turning out to be very similar. But what I will say is that Stork has gotten observers first, and he's seen exactly what's going on in 4GG's base. He sees that there's mines everywhere. Um, he sees that there's no turrets, and I wonder if 4GG actually might have been even trying to tempt Stork into doing a reaver drop on the mines and losing his reavers or something like that by not having uh, turrets on purpose. Uh, but Stork, however, he's not going to go for reavers at this point. Um, he it looks like he's seen that 4GG is kind of prepared for this, and he's going to go straight for a uh, Templar attack, or at least for the Citadel. Sometimes they just go for speed lots, but I would expect Stork to try and get some early Templar out uh, at this point. Um, Interesting, just kind of interesting how things are playing out here. It's kind of standard openings in a way, but there, it's not turning out to be a standard game. And Stork pushing in here, going to take out a couple tanks and fall back. Um, very nicely done. Stork, very, very nice. good at putting in, putting on the pressure and, uh, you know, sniping units off. It's exactly what he needs to do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, every time that he uh, he keeps the pressure on, 4GG can't push in and start up that, uh, like you were talking about, difficult to stop tank push and uh, general just Terran pushing because he's like with the plateaus and uh, everything in the middle, he, he really is going to have a lot of trouble 
um, stopping up any type of Terran push. So he's going to have to play it smart, and I think you're right. I think he's got to get that tech early to avoid being in a... Uh, uh, a strictly Zealot Dragoon situation trying to stop that when you can't really maneuver the way you need to. And uh, 4GG getting a couple of drag uh, sorry Goliaths out, so it looks like he's pre he's prepared for any drop shuttles that will be around, and there is a drop sh uh, drop shuttle there now. I don't know what he has in the drop shuttle, because I, I missed, uh, I don't know if they showed him loading anything up, but uh, it looks like, oh, it looks like, Stork may actually put some more pressure on, but I, I haven't. I can't believe he hasn't pushed in when they weren't seized up. And now trying to drop, uh, looks like zealot bombs in that after all, and losing that that shuttle real quickly to those Goliaths, which is huge. He's trying to push in against a lot of tanks with only dragoons, but doing a really good job. He's actually getting pretty far in there, and now the zealots are coming in to join him. But the spider mines are going to slow him down a little bit, and oh, a lot of dragoons going down to that spider mine, and the zealots just pushing in on the tanks at the last ses last second. It would have been nice if they were there. A little bit sooner, but he does not have speed zealots, and that is hurting him most definitely. But doing a lot of damage to the economy of 4GG at this point with his dragoons. Although, as soon as some tanks come up on that ledge, I don't know what he'll be able to do. Stork keeping the pressure on and trying to take out the command center at the same time. And 4GG uh, starting to, to make some troops up at the top, but it looks like he may actually get that command center. The dragoons firing feverishly at it before. Oh, but the oh, but he's repairing wow. it too quicker that he could take the damage out. And 4GG just barely saved. Saving that command center and now with his troops out, he's going to block off at the SEVs and, and he's basically going to clean up this little attack and Stork's going to have to back off. I don't think he's going to be able to break this at this point. Wow, that was some clutch repair work there by, um, you know, 10 SEVs repairing that command center. I, had, I am very surprised it survived. Um, Certainly, though, Stork has taken an advantage, I feel. He's taken out all of uh, the Tyran player 4GG's army, and, of course, the Protoss is much quicker to rebuild than the Tyrans are in general. Um, Stork uh, at three bases also, and 4GG barely at, you know, two bases. His second base is probably still under siege, and probably can, uh, he can't safely mine from it. Um, maybe he has managed the liftings. Uh, well, hold on for a sec. That's my dog. But, um... Anyway, my dog is expressing how cool that attack was by Stork, not waiting for, uh, you know, not waiting for a uh, reaver attack or anything like that, just going straight bulldog style in there with his uh, speed shuttles, uh, with his shuttle rather, and his, uh, his zealot drops. Um, looks like he's going to try to go again for this, but I don't think it's going to work this time. Whoa, that's a lot of suicidal uh, zealots there. Um, he's pushing up five dragoons on this ramp. Wow, he's going to pick off, uh, well, there's still one tank left there, up there, so it's going to barely manage to uh, hold here for for 4 gg but uh, Stork's doing a good job of keeping the unit count very low for 4 gg but looks like 4 uh, gg managing to get a Vulture Sneak somehow into Stork's base, but uh, wow, Stork with some clutch reinforcements coming out at that time, and Stork has a nice little pylon gate uh, almost there, and uh, now Stork is picking up his fourth base here. I think Stork is way in the lead at this point. That that was uh, that was pretty good. All he needs is a. Uh, well, I guess there's no bridge. Never mind. Um, yeah, Stork. I I can't. I'm not sure how 4GG is gonna try and come back into this game. Stork has been putting a lot of pressure on him. I think the critical thing is that. Well, never mind. I just I just realized Stork has four bases actually. 4GG is gonna have to do a lot of harassment. I think he's gonna come back. A lot of vulture harassment. He's trying to do that, but it's not really working very well. Um, so I think that's kind of the way that he should he should try and come back in this game, or at least that's the way that traditionally Protoss players do try and come back in this game. He does have a Goliath out there. It's going to scare that shuttle off. Um, critically though, Stork has been kind of, he's spent the last few minutes throwing away his uh, armies on for Gigi's front door to try and break him. And I think if Stork had just played conservatively and taken the map, uh, he'd be in a lot better position. Stork just too anxious to finish finish this off going in you know as you said without even speed zealots at that point and now we see his whole army is consistent of uh eight dragoons and four or five zealots um and a, and a shuttle and uh, he doesn't even I, I i don't think i've even seen him get templar tech yet at this point so i don't know i i think stork might have given up his dis given up his advantage there and uh it might not be too good if if for gd has basically been let back into this game and for gg now pushing in uh on stork's natural well, it's interesting to see if 4GG is going to be able to accomplish enough with this tank. He's only got one tank, so I don't know how much he's going to be able to do here, but Stork in a little bit of trouble, though. Yeah, I mean, that container is already set up around him, and Stork, you can see, is already being affected by it. He can knock it out, and now there's a lot of tanks there. And it uh, doesn't look like Stork's going to be able to push out of there. He definitely does not have the army to push out of there. And I think he... And now he's trying to push into it, and I, and I don't think he has the forces that can... 
that can really support this type of attack. 4GG with a lot of vultures to take care of those zealots, but those zealots on the tank, so he may break this after all. No, he's lost almost all of his dragoons, so this is going to go down, and, and Stork definitely in a lot of trouble now because he's got no forces at this point. What, five units? And uh, 4GG just kind of tightening up the stranglehold right now outside of his base. A DT out, but scan quick enough, way quick enough to take care of it. And, and it looks like Stork just, again, throwing away units that he does not have to throw away. And he's going to lose all these. Trying to take out the tank, it barely does. And now he's going to be able to handle the vultures, but still... 4GG is right outside of his base. There's a ton of spider mines and enough tanks to at least keep the dragoons back from taking out those spider mines. And now he's forced back in his base. And that means that 4GG has him separated. So, uh, Firebat Hero, I mean, sorry, Firebat Hero. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, Whoa. Stork not going to be able. <laughs> I I've been thinking about him so much lately, you know. Uh, Stork not going to be able to get out of here and his bases are separated. So 4GG is going to be able to pick off one side of his base at, at once and there's nothing that Stork's going to be able to do about it. I think he should have switched to carriers, guys. <laughs> well, Stork has a lot of gateways here, but he still has not any uh, made any Templar attack. I think he's just uh, perhaps just lack the resources to constantly rebuilding his army. One thing I want to note, though, is that 4 gg has been doing a great job scanning and sniping observers, um, and that's really helped him uh, tighten this noose of, uh, of vulture mines and tanks around him because Stork couldn't move out. All of his observers kept getting scanned and killed by Goliaths, and now Stork is going to have to push out here through a very narrow choke point here. Uh, is he going to be able to do it? I don't know. Um, Looks like there's still three tanks alive. Stork trying to pull out. Of course, he's aiming for the tanks. Those are what does do the most damage to his Dragoons, and it's, he's not going to be able to push out here. There's just too good of a position here from 4GG. Stork looks like he's going to lose his entire army here. With this army gone, I, I just don't know how Stork's going to possibly break out here. I think he might lose, unfortunately, due to uh, just a very, very good counterattack from 4GG and very, very nice uh, observer sniping. Um, just, oh, Stork trying to drag some mines into the tank. Looks like he will get one tank there with that uh, nice Nice little, um, nice little zealot drop, but I think the Goliath so far have been the, the most impressive part of 4GG's plays. Of course, another thing is that 4GG probably is way ahead on upgrades. Uh, I don't think they've checked recently, or I haven't seen it recently, but I think that's going to definitely help his army here as Stork tries once again to break out. He's 1-1. Yeah, you're right about... Yeah, oh, just 0-1 oh, upgrades, it looks okay, like, he's for 1-1, uh, yeah. For GG, but, um, yeah, th I think that one of the things that 4GG's been doing well is targeting the shuttles with the Goliaths. Sometimes the, the Goliaths will switch their fire to the Zealots, and they won't do nearly as much damage, tactically speaking, as they will if they target that shuttle. So now 4GG, after five minutes of siege, um, laying siege to Stork's base, is finally moving into his natural, and in the meantime, 4GG has taken another base, so, and there goes the Nexus. So right now, three base versus three base. Stork putting up a fourth, but um, he is pinned in his base right now. He has this ramp uh, to hold, but I I'm one of the things I'm curious about, I'm wondering why he hasn't built more gateways here in other bases. Uh. Okay, here's one gateway there. Uh, that expansion is going to get taken out, though, it looks like. No, Dark Templar might come in there and uh, help things out, but um, I, I think it would have been good for Stork to maybe build some more gateways outside of his base, come in for a flank from his main and from uh, outside or something like that. But I think the best thing would have been uh, kind of like what Ryze said. If when he took it, took that advantage from 4GG in the, earlier in the game, instead of suiciding his army into 4GG's door, he should have held the map and gone carriers like Ryze said. Um, and I think that would have clinched it for him. But it looks like at this point it's going to go to game three. And uh, either player, whoever wins that third game, is going to be uh, going on. I guess game's not quite over yet, but uh, I don't know. It's practically over. <laughs> Rise, do you think it, Stork has any chance anymore? No, if you look, he's only actually mining from one base right now he's, because he lost his natural expansion. His main is already mined out. He just lost another expansion. So he's only mining from one base and uh, trying to get a second one up, but uh, 4GG is getting up a fourth base. And... I, well, I think he's uh, about to get up a fourth base anyway. But it looks like uh, that that base, that that last mining base of his, is going to go down to uh, 4GG's onslaught at this point. And and uh, oh no, he did get a second base up and running in that time period. So <laughs> 4GG, for some reason, <laughs> mining from minerals without a command center there, but. Uh, I guess he's planning to build something there at some point. And it looks like, yeah, he is going to lose that third uh, expansion that, well, sorry, second expansion that he made originally. And uh, Storks is trying to do some Zealot Bombs to harass a little bit, but there's not going to really be much of an effect on this, especially considering he's just on Siege. And I, I got to say, I think Stork is pretty much out of the game at this point. 
Yeah, I think Stork uh, honestly should conserve his energy and, and GG at this point. Um, he does have to face. Uh, he does have to face. Um, for GG again uh, in a few minutes only because games two and three are played on the same day. So uh, you know there is that psychological aspect to StarCraft, which is very very important at the top top levels. And certainly it's been a factor for Stork too. When Stork is on fire, he is on fire. Um, but when he's not, I mean, he's choked so many times in the past. Uh, not as bad as some player like uh, Sea Shield or something, or a Savior, but certainly uh, still a player who's, um, well, you know, whose whose emotions do play a role in his games. Uh, you know, unlike other players, I'd say like Nada, it, you know, it really doesn't matter. He his his declines have been more due to skill loss. But um, anyway, though, Stork going for the last charge. GG coming from Stork. Yeah, uh, so this is going to go to the set 3 right now. Um, set 3 is going to be on uh, Medusa, which is going to be, I think, a little bit favored towards Stork, actually. Alright, let's go do it. GG, and uh, looking forward to game 3.